Welcome to Press Availability here. We've got Representative Colleen Sullivan Leonard from Wasilla and uh, Laura Reinbold from Eagle River, myself, Representative Mark Newman. I live in Big Lake from District 8. Um, we're here to answer your questions, but uh, a little bit for some opening remarks. You know, it was an interesting week last week. Um, the budget finally moved through the House uh, a couple weeks late, uh, but it went through. It's, it's not funded, so kind of a few questions that I have on that is the, the $700 million was left out of the earnings reserve. I don't know if that's uh, a hold for a future income tax that they may be thinking about or what the game is going to be on that one, but it's interesting to me why that was left on the table. With $100 million of that is a backstop, so um, we'll see how that plays out in the end. Uh, probably some questions there. I'm sure that there's some type of a thought behind that. Uh, but we'll work through it and uh, get it over to the Senate and see what they've got going. I know that they're working diligently on both budgets and looking at that. Look forward to the capital budget coming forward. Uh, Representative Rambo. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here. This is uh, quite a number of, of press here today. So thank you for taking time to hear what we have to say. Uh, first of all, I want to say I am glad that the budget is finally, you know, over in the Senate and um, very disappointing that most, if not all, of the budget cuts were denied or blocked or ruled out of order. So that was very disappointing, especially in a fiscal crisis when we're in a deep recession in Alaska. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that uh, over in the Senate that they can actually make some meaningful cuts and uh, reduce the massive footprint of, of big government in Alaska, which is about three times per capita of the national average per person. So it's it's a, a big, big, big budget. I think right now is a perfect time to reduce uh, some of the state funding because we, we have, and, and if someone asks me a question, I will explain uh, some of the federal funds that we've gotten. We have definitely gotten an increase in federal funds in our budget this year. It would have been a great time to reduce UGF. Um, and uh, just moving on in regards to judiciary, uh, that has been a very, very busy committee this year, as, as you all know. It's one of the highest rated and highest viewing that there's, a, there's been uh, this year. And um, so we got a lot of big issues going on in, in judiciary committee. Uh, what I am disappointed with, it, with is judiciary is they are not hearing the full repeal of Senate Bill 91, even though the cries are loud out there and the, and the people are done with all this rampant crime. They really want us to do something. And so... Uh, I really hope Senator Coghill and uh, Matt Clayman get on the ball and actually uh, help us uh, get some judiciary uh, committee hearings in regards to addressing uh, the rampant crime out there. And finally, I just want to say that uh, thank you for all the over 25,000 people that have been following um, the issue that I have been doing on Facebook with exposing big government and big government salaries. It's been a very popular series, and I would recommend you guys still watch that very closely. Thank you. Colleen? Well, good morning, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, yes, the budget was passed over to the Senate. Um, I did not vote for it. Um, I know that uh, in our last week's uh, deliberations, we did have the, pull, the full permanent fund dividend before us. I did support that, and I do continue to support that. That's in statute that we do uh, process that in a way through a formula-driven uh, disbursement, and I think we need to follow statute on that. Um, as we look forward to the, the budget being uh, discussed in the Senate, I think we really have to keep our eye on the ball with regard to taxes that are in various committees. It's kind of been quiet a little bit, but, you know, our, uh, our oil companies are now having to face another tax that's being discussed in various committees, and I think that's just wrong. Um, you know, when you look at the Forbes uh, status of, of where Alaska ranks, we're number 50th with regard to a really strong business economic climate, and, and we need to change that, and you can't do it with increased taxation um, all across the board. So that's something I'm looking at this week, and we'll continue to uh, discuss further. Um, the other thing, just real quickly on the budget, um, I was really discouraged that, you know, as we had our discussions with regard to the operating budget, that uh, Hess was off the table, Department of Education was off the table. Hess is a $3.03 .03 billion budget. Nothing should be off the table when it comes to reductions in the operating budget. And uh, so I, I need to, we need to continue to discuss that and, and look at priorities. Priority for me would be public safety. I know in my district, and 
our districts uh, collectively, we've really been hit hard with crime. I can't tell you how many times people have called me saying, my truck's been broken into again, it was stolen, it was stripped, and we get no response. That's got to stop. Anyway, thank you. Okay. Um, any follow-up, Rich? Yeah. Representative Reinbold, uh, you said that um, the House Judiciary has not had hearings on Senate Bill 91. Is, do you even have the bill in there yet? Okay, that, that's what I said was I have a House Bill 254. And House Bill 254 is a full repeal of Senate Bill 91 uh, with a few exceptions. Uh, for example, anything that happened in 54, which I thought was a very good bill, it keeps all of the provisions that we did in Senate Bill 54. In addition, it keeps Murder 1 and Murder 2. So I am working with different members of the committee and trying to get a hearing uh, on that bill in judiciary, but Matt Clayman is not looking hopeful. Is that very similar to what Mia Costello has offered in the Senate? Absolutely. I'm working very closely with Mia Costello. Um, I had the bill out first. It, it was way back in June. A year ago, June. So um, it's uh, it's it's something, and I try to block Senate Bill 91, as you know. I, I four days, I try to filibuster that bill and just expose the horrors and and pretty much everything I said on the floor. And and I I was actually happy to work with other members, even in the, uh, bipartisanly, uh, in regards to trying to block that bill. And it's I still believe the worst piece of legislation that's ever passed. And, and I, in, in the state legislature, and I, and I, I personally, I'm speaking for myself, I, I believe we need to address that, and it, it needs to be to the top of our priority. Certainly a big issue with, you know, trying to deal with crime, and a lot of folks in our neighborhood feel that 91 was the blame on that. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Andrew. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. I'm interested in each of your thoughts on what specifically you would like to see in order to vote for a constitutional budget reserve draw? I'll go first on regards to that. So basically what the constitutional budget reserve this year is they're asking, I believe, for $708 million draw uh, for a constitutional budget vote in regards to that. Well, my opinion is I believe we can easily trim $200 million off the budget, and then we got $500 million extra this year. If you look at what the federal funds that came in, uh, last year it was $2.2 billion. This year for fiscal year 2019, it's $2.7 billion, and I think those funds can easily replace. So I, I personally don't think that we need to get into the, the uh, conversation in regards to the con Constitutional budget reserve if it's only 708 million that they're asking for us to draw because we did get 500 million extra and the 200 million um, But I I actually I, I believe that public safety is the top mandate right now And that that for me to enter into conversations if they were to have me enter into conversations in regards to this I would actually want to trim the budget in addition for a full repeal with a few exceptions I spoke about with Senate bill 91 You know Andrew I, I quite frankly don't know why they would have to even go for the $700 million three, you know, CBR vote on there. $100 million of that is for a backstop for overspending in state governments, my understanding. Um, I know when I was a co-chair, we would use one of the enter enterprise accounts out there, like the, the higher education fund. Uh, the enterprise accounts that are putting out more money, making more money than they're constitutionally or statutorily required to pay out. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, that had been a normal backstop. So that would bring it down to about $600 million. Representative Reinbold just talked about reductions that could have been made in through there. Um, quite frankly, they could have took and taken the rest out of the earnings reserve account, out of the savings, out of the earnings reserve. I don't know why the choice was made to, to do a three-quarter vote, you know, on $700 million. Um, it, it's an interesting question, though. I, I guess I look at it a little bit differently. In, um, in recent uh, Dittman poll from the Alaska Chamber of Commerce, they asked about a spending cap. The spending cap... Uh, uh, was at a 78 percent uh, believe that there should be a spending cap. We know that the Senate has uh, just passed legislation with regard to a spending cap at 4.1 billion for general fund. There you go. If we can bring that down to that level, um, I may consider a CBR. Uh, okay. Steve Quinn, KTV. I've got two questions. First is um, the, the metric of per capita spending is used a lot, but you know when Alaska was getting a lot of federal funds, the criticism was that's a lot of money per capita from the feds. The response was 
the population is widely distributed and it's not a fair metric. And that was a response from Alaska to the feds. So is that a fair metric um, per capita uh, spending when our population is relatively sparse with such a big state and it's obviously very well spread out? And I've got a follow up. Is that addressed to me? And you have sure. one to three. Uh, Laura's going to take that okay. follow up. So, so basically, um, Alaska is big, it's spread out, we, we understand that. However, is three times, according to Kaiser and according to the census data, three times the national average per capita? You know, that's a question Alaskans need to answer. Is that too big? For example, administration in Alaska, five times the national average. I certainly think we can trim administration. We could go on and on and on, but I think there's some tremendous efficiencies that need to take place, and I don't think it's time for the private sector to take more and more and impose an income tax, take the permanent fund dividend, et cetera, et cetera, which I see massive inefficiencies in state government and a complete lack of bipartisan effort to reduce the size and scope of big government. You know, Steve, that, that's an interesting question that we've been looking at for years, too, because when you look at the per capita spending, there's large areas of our state, like the Matsu, Anchorage, Kenai areas, Fairbanks area, Northwest Arctic borough that tax themselves. And so you have organized areas of the borough that are paying, a, you know, I right now pay, the average person in the Matsu pays 150 200 probably close to $250, $300 a week or a month to the borough just to live in their home or the government will take it away. You know, so when we're looking at per capita spending statewide, are we looking at what people in organized areas have to pay to compare to unorganized areas that are not paying, you know, as far as that share? And so when we look at using the permanent fund, different taxes, how those different, how they affect the people that we represent is different because we do support a lot of the things, you know, in organized areas that we have in our areas. Rural area doesn't, it's just pretty much 100% supported by government. And so when you look at, that discussion on, you know, the per capita spending, that, that has to be part of that discussion. And there's also been a large influx, you know, a large of federal funding has been coming in, much more than has been coming in the past and much more than what we expected. And what, again, on this budget, too, we see not only additional money coming in from the federal government being spent, we have additional money from the state being spent. Thank you. I'll, I'll pass. Um, my next question is, you know, over the last two, three, four years, when I hear public testimony and I hear people from your districts, they want to cut the budget, they want a full dividend, but they also want to make sure that their roads are plowed and that there's more troopers and that there's more teachers in the schools. Can you afford all that? Is that, is that a reasonable formula? You know, Steve, I'll, I'll take that one because there's a lot of things that I feel we're not doing in this budget. And, and I'll, you know, I've talked a lot about the Kinnick Arm Crossing and the advantages of that. Um, everybody here in the press has got copies of what I've handed out from literally letters from the commissioner of DOT, the chief planner, both with over 45 years, the chief uh, bonding officer for the state of Alaska, on state letterhead saying how these projects won't cost the state a dime. My question is, is if you want to lower the budget, you want to reduce crime, you want to help have a better, safer, stronger Alaska, have some jobs. My question is, is we could be putting three quarters of a billion dollars just in the state funding, let alone the economic multipliers, right in the heart of our, our state. And we're not doing it. And I'll just summarize it this way. Last week when I met with Commissioner Lucan and Governor Walker up in his office, and I asked Commissioner Lucan this question, I said, Commissioner Lucan, and they were ready for it. They know because every time I go there, I ask him this. You know me. Hey, Steve's smiling. They're all smiling. It's, it's my game. But, you know, uh, the thing of it is, is we could be having this money. And when I asked Commissioner Lucan, I said, can you give me the current status on